Da, 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 da. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the public hearing for June 20th. Um, as we have a quorum, I will call the meeting to order. It is 7.03. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please provide an overview of the public hearing procedures? Thank you, Your Worship. This public hearing is being held pursuant to sections 464 and 465 of the Local Government Act. The public hearing is being live streamed and recorded and will be available for the public for playback payback on the city website in accordance with council policy 3.12. The purpose of a public hearing is to allow all persons who believe their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaws a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the bylaws that is subject of the hearing. Council's role in a public hearing is to listen. This is not a forum for debate or comment by council, nor for gestures or remarks of support. All persons who believe that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaws will be asked to provide their name and address for the record before beginning their remarks to give council an idea of proximity to the application. Please note that comments can only be accepted regarding bylaws that are the subject of this public hearing. For members of the public attending the public hearing in person who would like to speak, please approach the podium when the chair calls for public input. Please clearly state your name and address for the record before beginning comments. If you're participating electronically, please register as a speaker by raising your hand, turn on your camera and clearly state your name and city of residence before beginning your comments. The, sit, the corporate officer will confirm whether the statutory requirements for the public hearing have been met. Planning department staff will give a presentation on each item, after which the chair will call for public comment on the bylaws. Each, per, each person wishing to speak will be allotted five minutes. If after everyone who wishes to speak has have had the opportunity to, be, to do so, speakers will be allowed to speak again for up to five minutes, as long as their questions or comments are new information. Speakers are asked to provide their name and address before beginning their comments and to address only the issue at hand. Staff will respond to technical questions where possible. After the public hearing has been closed, council cannot receive any further communication, written or verbal, regarding the public hearing item. Further consideration of bylaws on this agenda will take place at the next regular council meeting. Thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you very much. Before we proceed, I'd like to acknowledge that the City of Maple Ridge carries out its business on the traditional and unceded territory of the Katsi First Nation and the Kwantlen First Nation. Uh, we will now begin the public hearing. Madam Clerk, can you please introduce the first item and confirm whether the statutory requirements have been met? Point of order. I just want to confirm with the the rules of tonight's evening that if people for privacy uh, reasons, they don't have to state at the microphone their address, they can hand it to you on a piece of paper. It still meets the community charter. That is correct. Okay, thank you. They do need to mention their place of residence, though. Just that they, what city they live in, but yes. they don't have to give their address. They can write it down on a piece of paper. Correct. Yeah, that is correct. Because I know there's some privacy concerns. Thanks. Madam Clerk, the... All right, beginning with item 2.1. The first item on the agenda is application 2023-123-RZ. The subject application is to permit secondary suites and detached garden suites on the same lot in the ALR. The bylaw associated with this application is Maple Ridge Zone Amending Bylaw number 7929-2023 a bylaw to permit secondary suites and detached garden suites on the same lot in the agricultural land reserve. The statutory requirements have been met for this public hearing with notices posted on the June in the June 9th and 16th editions of the local paper. Uh, zero pieces of correspondence were received in relation to this application. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a presentation. The floor is yours. Oh, not working. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> there it Good, is. There we go. Good evening. 
uh, bylaw number 7929-2023 uh, it poses allowing secondary suites and detached garden suites on the same lot in the agricultural land reserve. In terms of a bit of background, on January, in January, or since January 2022, the Agricultural Land Commission, or ALC for short, has permitted secondary suites and detached garden suites on the same lot uh, within the ALR without an application to the ALC. The ALC made these changes in order to allow more residential uh, housing flexibility within the ALR. At the April 26, 2022 Council Workshop, 11 regulatory options were presented to expand secondary suite and attached garden suite regulations. And at this workshop, Council directed staff to bring forward a zone amending bylaw to allow secondary suites and attached garden suites on the same lot uh, in the ALR in order to align with these new regulations. And so tonight's zone amending bylaw number 7929-2023 proposes an amendment to the zoning bylaw to permit secondary suites and attached garden suites on the same lot uh, within the agricultural land reserve. The table on the screen is also found in the report. Uh, it's just to highlight the uh, regulations in blue are our current regulations and they're not changing. The regulations that are highlighted in boxes uh, yellow and also bolded are the regulations that are changing. Right now, uh, a secondary suite and attached garden suite are not permitted on the same lot anywhere within the city. Um, and the bylaw tonight proposes allowing attached garden suite and a uh, secondary suite on the same lot, but only if a property is within the agricultural land reserve. So the terms and conditions that zone amending bylaw number 7929-2023 was given first and second reading on May 9th, 2023 and forwarded to this public hearing to permit secondary suites and attached garden suites on the same lot in the agricultural land reserve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this time we will, uh, uh, is there anybody in chambers or online who wish to publicly comment on this item? Seeing nobody online and seeing nobody in chambers, I will put forth a second call. Anybody wish to comment on this item? Seeing no one and a third and final call. Anybody wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, um, I will call this public hearing closed. This public hearing item closed. Uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please introduce the second item and confirm whether the statutory requirements have been met? Thank you, Your Worship. The next item on tonight's agenda is Maple Ridge Temporary Use Permit 2022-286-RZ. The subject application is the issuance of a temporary use permit for the subject property located at a portion of 248, or sorry, 24548 Low Heat Highway and unaddressed lot identified by PID number 10128470046. The subject application is to permit a temporary office and outdoor storage over a portion of the subject site for a period of up to three years. The statutory requirements have been met for this public hearing with notices in the June 9th and 16th editions of the local paper. And 43 notices were mailed out and zero pieces of correspondence were received in relation to the application. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And we have a presentation. Floor is yours. Thank you. The temporary use permit application here, 2022-286-RZ, is for the above noted uh, two properties on Low Heat Highway. The site is zoned industrial under the official community plan, is zoned RS3 single detached rural residential in the zoning bylaw, and is approximately two acres. And the purpose for this temporary use permit is to allow for a temporary office and outdoor storage use over a portion of the site. This temporary use application has been received for the above noted temporary use space, vehicle parking, outdoor storage, and materials. Uh, the temporary use permit would allow interim use of the site as this applicant is pursuing. Uh, rezoning for the larger site, which is about 25 acres, uh, from M uh, to M2 General Industrial Zone under application 2021-074-RZ. So this is a small portion of site, a little less than 10% of it, which will be shown on the next slide. 
The temporary use permit is valid for only three years is issued by council and can be renewed once by council for another three years if council so chooses. Uh, soil permit application and a water courses and natural features development permit application have been received or being processed in conjunction with this um, temporary use application, the rezoning application. This is the larger site, the approximately 25, 26 acre site that's under the rezoning application outlined in red. Sit on the uh, cadastral subject map. And this is uh, the enlargement of the temporary use application area, which is about two acres, uh, as mentioned, uh, for the uh, outdoor storage and truck parking, and would be involving basically a three-year term unless approved for renewal by council. And you'll see on the map, there's a location for the uh, temporary portable office building and lunchroom and space for truck parking and trailer parking. And there'd be a soil permit uh, required for this to be issued for about 20,000 cubic meters, which is approximately 10% of the fill and removal that would be required if the full rezoning goes ahead. So it's about 10% of the site and about 10% of the soil deposition and removal for leveling of the soil. There's also the um, water course and natural features development permit that's being reviewed by our environment staff and with the developers, um, our applicants, uh, consultants, and has been reviewed by the province. So the terms and conditions of this uh, application are as follows. Um, first of all, there's the approval of the Ministry of Transportation Infrastructure for an access permit and all requirements related to, including geotechnical assessment study and traffic impact study. Approval from the Canadian Pacific Railway, issuance of the soil permit by the city, as I previously noted, issuance of the water course protection natural features development permit as noted, um, and a building permit for any of the buildings, mainly the portable temporary office and lunchroom building. And that would have to um, be meeting all the electrical permits as required also. And a, a letter of undertaking from the applicant to ensure removal of the buildings after the expiration of the temporary use permit and a conditional business license being obtained, uh, which would confirm that all the buildings comply with the building code, has fire department approval, and any other exter external agencies being requirements being met, such as Fraser Health for on-site sewage disposal for the office, um, your worship. Thank you very much. Uh, does any member of the public in chamber or online wish to comment on this item? Please step on up. Just state your name and your place of residence. Um, Stephen D'Souza, 24330 River Road. So basically this site is kind of on a ravine. I'm on the west side of it, basically the first house next to the site. Um, the site in question had been used as an old dump site. So there is a whole bunch of tires, vehicles. It was a stump fire. So I don't know the particulars, but it was burning for about eight to 10 months. They were bringing in helicopters and stuff to put it out, which just later fanned the fire. And people living there previous to me had to leave or evacuate for six to eight months. So I read in some of the notes that uh, they did have to take materials out, but that's just me putting, asking for assurance from, and again, I don't know the, the course of action with dealing with government, but just dealing with that soil being taken out and making sure that with the 10% that's being put on this temporary use, plus the other additional 90% that's coming in, that it's actually going to be stable in that area. Um, when the atmospheric rivers happened, me and my neighbor, which is again, directly on that site, had slope and stuff issues, just because that area is not structurally sound. Um, if you look and have you ever driven in that area where they're planning to take a right and turn into and the right out is on a corner where cars are going about 100 kilometers an hour. So right now, if we are to turn westbound coming out of River Road where we are, cars are going about 100 kilometers an hour. We're turning on to the center lane and we merge in. So if you've got truck and transfers that are now turning into that site, how are they turning? Yes, they can put their blinker on, but if they're turning right out onto that site, someone's coming around a blind corner at about hundred kilometers an hour. We've seen multiple deaths on that area already. So 
I think in one of the notes, it said that they were going to ask for this permit prior to getting the ministry, uh, the ministry of transportation's um, final approval on it. So that would just be me bringing that to your attention that I don't think it should be allowed until that light happens. Cause then you've got these trucks that are turning in and out of that unit or out of that complex. Um, it's just, it's going to be a nightmare for me personally on where I live. If you're now bringing in, I did a quick math. If you're bringing in 20,000 cubic meters, depending on the size of the truck and transfers, that's 665 to 952 trucks that are coming into that site. Um, if there's multiple trucks coming in, there's nowhere for them to turn around. They're just going to turn onto our street, which is right before, and we're going to have multiple trucks just backing up, waiting to turn on to our, waiting to get into that site. So again, that would be me going to council and saying, what assurance do we have that you're not causing a backload where trucks are pulling over the side of Lougheed Highway or also just sitting on our on our street where my kids are, are playing? Um, when the, there was a soil permit application that was allowed and that was approved, I believe, in October, I wish I was here to say something then, uh, but uh, through contacts of the local government and mayor, they said, oh, this isn't going to go through. But anyways, that's near here or there. But in that permit application for, for having a soil uh, to be able to dump, they had a limit on the amount of trucks that could go in and out of the out of that um, site. So again, that would be, is that under this per permit where you limit the amount of trucks that can kind of go in? And then also the business hours. So are they dropping off at six o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night? Um, yeah, and that's that's about it. That's all I have to say. Uh, just, just with us knowing how we get in and out of that site, if you allow those amount of trucks to be going in, you're going to get a bottleneck in that area. So either they need a lane that kind of allows them to slow down to be able to turn. And then again, if you look at that intersection and someone's a big truck is turning out onto the low heat highway going 10 kilometers an hour and someone's coming around that corner, you cannot see that truck until you're, I don't know, very close. So that would be my thing. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I note that uh, staff have been taking notes and they'll take all of that into consideration. Thank you very much. Um, you're welcome to come on up. Um, good evening. My name is Andrew Baker um, with Applin Martin, and we are the agent for the um, the applicant for this site, which is a company called Seven Horses, probably a numbered company. So um, it's good to hear from uh, the neighbor. I haven't actually met him before, but I wanted to address his comments to see if I can provide some assurance as to what's going on with this project. So the comments about the Ministry of Transportation and the access, it, it is obviously a, a, a curve and it's a blind corner. And uh, we have, I guess you'd call a tentative approval from the Ministry of Transportation for, um, I guess it would be a deceleration lane and acceleration lane and a reconfiguration of the, what is that piece of river road that goes into the site. And we'll, I guess we'll provide a better access to the mobile home part. That's uh, next door to okay. us on our east side. Um, so when the TUP is actually officially operating, they would be they would be using this new deceleration lane, acceleration lane, and it would be a right in, right out configuration. This is what we've negotiated with the Ministry of Transportation. Um, so obviously, there's the actual construction of the works that are required to build this TUP. There is some earth moving. A lot of the earth moving is going to be internal to the site associated with um, there's two DPs that have to be completed there in their relationship to the environmental work. So um, obviously during that period of time, the Ministry of Transportation will require flagging and safety signs and those type of things to allow the trucks come and go. So we're in the process of working through our final approvals with the Ministry of Transportation, which includes extensive designs, which will take a few more months yet to sort out. So I, I believe that we shouldn't, should not be in any situation where anyone is using the other piece of river road uh, the previous gentleman was speaking about the lives on. 
Uh, this should all be done in accordance with the Ministry, and Ministry of Transportation's requirement for access during the construction and then access when we actually have a TUP operating would be through the new intersection config configuration, which would be right in and right out and a new configuration for that intersection so that trucks can come and go. And also the, the residents of the mobile home park can still safely come and go if a truck were, be, were in the intersection at the same time. So the intersection is a complete reconfiguration of what's going on there. And it's not contemplating a left out at this point in time because it's a blind corner. So that's what I can provide you as to what's going on with the Ministry of Transportation approval and access to the site. Um, we are aware it's a contaminated site. We have um, an expert involved um, to deal with this. And we are aware that there is the possibility of some contamination in the TUP area. And once we get in there, we'll have to be testing that material. We're expecting that it's a, the material will have to be removed immediately and taken off site. And we are aware of the history of the site. We have extensive geotechnical work done on it, and we're expecting that there will be areas that will have to be uh, further excavated and removed and remediated as part of the overall rezoning application. So we are aware of these things, and they are part of the work program that is part of the TUP that is uh, where is before you tonight. Um, the previous um, trucking and fill site application, all of those things, we've, we've kind of built on the environmental approvals only, but the rest of it, we've abandoned all of the previous ideas that was in another application that made it partway through the approval process. And this, um, this application requires um, much less fill, probably a third of the fill that was going to be brought in there previously. And um, so it should be, once we pull up, pull the site apart and rebuild it all, I think it'll be a much safer site too, because there'd be less material piled on that site and less chance of anything happening. Further to that, what's going on here is we are seeking a CP rail approval. Obviously they're very concerned about what's going on here. We're working with them very closely on, um, on the approvals. The TUP is, small enough that there's not a, a lot of concern at this point, but the <laughs> overall rezoning application, when that becomes before you, we'll have worked through more approvals with Canadian Pacific uh, Railway. We're in the process right now of setting up um, monitoring on the railway tracks. Um, about every 10 meters on the railway tracks, there are monitoring points to be monitoring throughout construction. Yeah. Um, so the, the trucks that come and go, yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. There is some trucks that are going to need to come in to bring in material. We can't reuse everything on, on site, but we're staying within under that 20,000 at this point in time, just for the TUP. And I believe that fits within uh, the application that we put forward and is before you tonight. So I hope those answer some of the questions and alleviate some of the concerns of our neighbor and uh, reassures everybody on this that uh, there's a professional team involved and we'll do our best to mitigate and all of the concerns that come up, with, especially with respect to trucking and getting on the neighbor's uh, road and thing, things. Thank you. Uh, as you know, it's public hearing tonight, so uh, we take everything into consideration. Uh, you know, there's some valid concerns that uh, will likely need to be addressed and um, we've taken all that information down. Okay. Thank you for your feedback tonight. You're welcome. Thank you very much Thank for letting you. me speak. Uh, anybody else on the first round? Seeing none, nobody's online? No. Okay, then we'll call a second round. You may come back up. Um, Steve D'Souza, 24330 River Road. I'm glad there's someone professional. I mean, that is just reassurance. For us, just again, not knowing government, um, is there something where we can get a sign that's put on our street that basically said local trucks only? So then there isn't that backup because that street is kind of a one way street. Yes, there's a little cul de sac, but at the end, those trucks turning around are using our driveways or, or whatever. So that was just a question that I had that they couldn't have. If you've got that sign that says little, local trucking only, at least maybe it deters 75% of trucks that could be parked there. Do you want to speak to that, Mr. Goddard? I, I will. The applicant has indicated that they would be posting a sign to prohibit their vehicles from entering that road. Okay. 
Thank you. And again, lots of good information that's coming through. So we appreciate it. Uh, anybody else for a second round in chambers or online? Seeing none, final call. Anybody wish to approach or online? Seeing none, I will uh, call this public hearing item closed. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move on to item 2.3, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> The next item on tonight's agenda is application 2021-023-RZ. The subject application is to permit the rezoning of the subject property located at 12080-228 Street from RS1 to R3 to allow the future subdivision of three lots and a rear access lane. The bylaw associated with this application is Maple Ridge Zone Amending Bylaw number 7762-2021 a bylaw to redesignate the subject properties from RS1 single detached residential to R3 single detached intens intensive urban residential. The statutory requirements have been met for this public hearing with notices posted in the June 9th and 16th editions of the local paper. 199 notices were mailed out and zero correspondence was received in relation to the application. Thank you. Thank you, you have the floor. So the above noted application for 12080228 Street for zone amending bylaw 7762-2021 is in an area that's designated single family residential in the town center area plan. Uh, the zoning is now RS1, single detached residential, and is proposed to be rezoned to R3, single detached intensive urban residential. And the site area is approximately 0.26 acres and three lots are proposed. This is a subject property on the uh, subject map, just showing uh, the location there. And then on the uh, town center OCP map, showing the single family designation on the site and to the north. And with the ortho photo showing the built environment, uh, here's the site here. This is a layout of the plan showing three lots with road dedication to widen 228th Street. The lane that is to be dedicated at this time uh, to 6.75 uh, meters width um, and then will be eventually joined up to future sections of lane that are built to the north in, in the future. In the interim, lot three will have a temporary easement or right away, I should say, right away and covenant to stop the building of a building and to allow for the passage of cars from 228th to that isolated section of lane. And when that section of lane is joined up, uh, then that right away and covenant would be removed and that lot could be built upon. But it's lot three at the top is used as that temporary connection for the interim. And that has happened to a few different sections of, um, of 228th Street where these isolated pieces of lane have been dedicated as are different owners applying. It uh, can't unfortunately be all done at the same time. So in a little more detail, um, the proposal is to allow for three lots with rear lane access. Uh, lots are 261 square meters, which is a little bit above the 255 square meter minimum lot size in the R3 zone. Um, there'd be a development variance permit required should this application proceed through to uh, third reading and to adoption to relax the lane width at the back to 6.75 meters. Um, that's only because in the future when properties develop to the east, the remaining 0.75 meters of lane would be integrated. So it's an interim variance, if, you'd, if you might say. Uh, and then the lane will be the full 7.5 meters width when the lots to the east develop and the remaining lane is dedicated. Um, each lot will have two off-street parking spaces um, accommodated within the building. And it should note that this intensive uh, residential development permit area that applies to only R3 we don't require development permits for any other type of uh, zoning, single family zoning, except for the R3 because they're small size. There'll be development permit plans brought forward for consideration of council that show the house envelope, parking, landscaping, uh, and that would show, of course, the parking in the garage and driveway parking. Sorry, not driveway parking, parking in the garage because it's off the lane. And um, each uh, garage will have uh, one roughed in level two charging outlet. And there's a community many contribution that would be applicable of 21,300. 
uh, dollars if the application proceeds to third reading. And uh, Madam Chair and Worship, this presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, does any member of the public uh, in chamber online wish to comment on this item? Seeing nobody in chambers and nobody online, I'll do a second call. Anybody wish to comment on this item? Uh, seeing no call, I'll do a third and final call. Anybody wish to speak to this item? Seeing none, I will declare this uh, public hearing item closed. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please introduce the fourth item and confirm whether the statutory requirements have been met? Thank you, Worship. The next item on tonight's agenda is 2021-092-RZ. Subject application is to permit the rezoning of the subject property located at 12414216 Street from RS1 to R1 to allow a future subdivision of two lots. The bylaw association with this application Associated with this application is Maple Ridge Zone Amending Bylaw Number 7754-2021, a bylaw to redesignate the subject properties from RS1 single detached residential to R1 single detached low density urban residential. The statutory requirements have been met for this public hearing with notices posted in the June 9th and 16th editions of the local paper. 34 notices were mailed out and uh, one piece of correspondence was received in opposition to this application and previously distributed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Goddard, you have the floor. Thank you. This is a rezoning application for a two lot split on 216th at 12414, 216th in our urban designated area. Again, it's about a third of an acre going to two lots, going from RS1 to R1. This is a subject site. You can see the other located applications nearby are similar types of applications. There's our urban designation in the uh, beige color. It's on the corner of 124th and 216th and it's being divided into two lots. The proposal, again, it's going to the RS1 single detached low density urban residential zone. These minimum lot sizes are 371. These lots will be significantly larger due to the much larger site of about 557 uh, each and 540. Again, there are two off street parking spaces provided for each dwelling within the structure and most likely some additional parking allowed on the driveways. Uh, they all will have single family garages, so they'll have be able to accommodate bikes and may have rough in for infrastructure capable uh, for level two charging. The applicant does have to pay one amenity charge of $7,100 for the new additional lot. We're at its public hearing this evening. This is the single family home on the current lot and the new lot will divide the home, thus require the home to be removed. There are two lots being created, you can see there. We're recommending it move forward, of course. It's had second reading on May 9th of this year, that it's public hearing this evening and our normal conditions apply, which are servicing agreement, uh, dedication on the surrounding roads, stormwater management plans required under a covenant, removal of an existing building. The site is not contaminated. We've determined that already and they have to pay the amenity charge. That's everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, does any member of the public and chamber online wish to comment on this item? Nobody's online. Oh, come on up. Just state your name and the city of residence, please. Okay. Hello, my name is Christina Thiessen. I live at that residence and I just would like to say a few words. I've never done this before, so I'm, I'm super nervous about this. So um, I guess I just want to say that, um, let me just bring up my phone, please. Sorry, if you could just speak closer to the microphone. Okay, perfect. thank you. Okay, um, I guess I'm here, standing here, trying to, um, okay, I'm just going to read first of all, and then I can go. go you have five minutes, so okay, take perfect. your time. Okay, so, um, uh, let's see. 
Okay. The items I would like to speak to are regarding my housing situation. My current um, residence is to be um, torn down next year. I am a single mother of four kids. Uh, the kids are 16, 13, 9, and 7. Uh, there is no housing in Maple Ridge as there are many people looking for housing and there are quite a few empty lots um, all around Maple Ridge. I'm asking for the, uh, for the empty lots to be built on before issuing any more permits. So I just wanted to let you know that it's really hard finding housing in Maple Ridge right now. And there's a lot of empty lots, I'm gonna say in Maple Ridge. And um, it's hard for a single mom with four kids with a bigger family trying to actually find housing. So what I'm asking is if this can be delayed and more, um, I'm gonna say lots be developed so we can actually find a home for our kids because you know, there's a lot of people homeless and Maple Ridge is, is just less and less housing and I'm worried about my situation. So that's why I'm here today. Nothing may happen, but I'm still standing up just letting you know that um, it's not right that the housing. So I'm, I'm hoping to um, delay it. That's what I'm asking. So, but anyways, I do have, um, uh, let's see, uh, keeping... Uh, maybe we're just keeping those. Okay. As there is limited housing for single uh, parents with a larger family, this would help the housing situation in Maple Ridge by keeping these homes available for renters. So sometimes there's a lot of lots that are just empty. They take them down and it's just, it sits there forever, maybe two, three years because I drive by them. And um, by taking them down sooner than they need to, it gives us a chance to actually rent for parents that can't find, you know, homes that are available because there just is not much housing in Maple Ridge. So also um, by having so many empty lots uh, scattered throughout Maple Ridge, it makes um, our city look undesirable. So I know that I drive around and there's just more than there should be. Uh, last one, uh, moving my family to another school, interrupting uh, their education will not be beneficial for them. It would be um, the end of their um, loss of friendships that um, they have built over the years. But I'm just trying to delay it. And just across the street, there's two empty ones. I would like those to be developed first and give us parents a chance to stay longer. So I guess that's all I have to say. Um, also that corner is super busy. So by having two developments, you know, I'm not sure how the driveways are close to the corner, the four way stop, but it's a super busy corner and having two driveways come out of the front of, I'm gonna say, is it 124th? Would, would it be backed up quite a bit by having two driveways go out there compared to on the side where there's one, so. I think that's all I, um, just a point of clarification. Uh, sorry. Are you actually living in the I property? Am, pardon? So you're renting that property? I'm renting right now? that property. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to delay it until, cause there's so many other properties. We're just having a hard time being able to rent and I'm trying to stand up for my kids. So, okay. Mm, so I, I may have another that. thought, so I might be back. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other, uh, anybody want to come to the podium? This is a second call. Nobody online, nobody in chambers and a third and final call being none. I will dis. I will dis. Uh, I will call this public hearing item closed. Thank you. Uh, Madam clerk, can you please introduce the fifth item and confirm whether the statutory requirements have been met? Can I be heard? Yeah, pardon oh, me, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I just got a message saying that uh, we have a someone who is listed as Robin Chris online who would like to speak on this application. I think that should be fine. Sorry, I was trying to type, but it wasn't coming through. Can I be heard? Can you hear me? Yes. Please state your name and your place of residence. Uh, Robin Chris, my wife is here with me. We are at uh, 12380 216th Street. Um, Actually, it has to do with both of these applications, the 12390 and the one across the street that the Christina was just talking about, the lady previous. 
I, sorry, Christina, right? Yeah. Um, sorry, if you could just speak to uh, the one that we're currently on, that is uh, 12414 216 Street, and then you'll okay. have an opportunity to speak to the next one as that one comes forward. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just starting my video, apparently. That's a requirement. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's working or not. Anyway. Um, we see you. OK, my biggest concern um, is the, like Christina was saying, was the busyness of that intersection increasing. I currently, my driveway currently exits onto 216th, and I am right next to 124th. And it's, it's still very difficult to come out of this. And there has been, you know, quite a few close calls uh, because that intersection is very busy. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about increasing the number of exiting driveways onto that road. Uh, living here all the time, we hear a lot of, a lot of, screaming, a lot of um, sirens coming through accidents that have happened here. So um, I share those same concerns. And um, on the, the that address, I think that's about all I have to say on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goddard, did you want to comment on that, you said? Not so much the access issue, but um, the applicant's timing, we're not aware, but this is a, uh, for final reading, we normally require the house to be removed. We could postpone that to the subdivision condition and it would require the house to be removed then, but I don't know what the timing is for the actual applicant. So we may want to consider that when you consider it at third reading. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sure that you'll bring that forward at third reading. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have, will now call this public, public hearing item closed. Uh, we're moving on to the, the fifth one or the sixth one? 2.5, right? Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please introduce the fifth item and confirm whether the statutory requirements have been met? Thank you, Worship. The next item uh, is application 2021-571-RZ. The subject application is to permit the rezoning of the subject property located at 12390-216 Street from RS1 to R1 to allow a future subdivision of two lots. The bylaw associated with this application is Maple Ridge Zone Amending Bylaw number 7821-2021, a bylaw to redesignate the subject properties from RS1 single detached residential to R1 single detached low density urban residential. The statutory requirements have been met for this public hearing with notices posted in the June 9th and June 16th editions of the local paper. 37 notices were mailed out and zero correspondence was received in relation to the application. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. Goddard, you have the floor. Thank you, Council. This is a similar application from one lot to two. On 216th at 12390 216th Avenue. I just had its public hearing this evening. Urban residential as well, going to R1. It's about a 10,000 square foot lot, about a quarter of an acre and two lots. So these lots will be R1, but they'll be quite large again across the street from the previous one. Urban residential, same single family neighborhood, very identical conditions, I would say. R1, two lots being created. The lots will be larger than the minimum lot size by a large degree. There's two parking spaces for each unit in the future home and likely some on the driveway. Bicycle parking in the garage, there'll be amenity charge of $7,100 per lot. And I think that's it, thank you. Oh, excuse me. There'll be a lot with variance from 24 meters. Um, it'll be reduced to 22.7, so about half a foot or a foot or so. Thank you. Thank you. Does any member of the public in chamber or online wish to comment on this item? That is their first call. Seeing nobody in chamber and nobody online? I'm, it's just me again online. Rob and Chris? Yes, we just need your video up and running again. There you are. Go ahead. 
sorry. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, same. Uh, so I forgot to mention on the previous one, uh, there's no other R1s in this entire area within, I couldn't see any anyway. So does that mean this whole section of Maple Ridge is open to that rezoning as well? Um, and then the same concerns with the um, access onto 216th and 124th that it's kind of a crazy intersection. They narrowed it down so that um, you could only get like the four way it used to have so that uh, you could have one car turning right while one car is going forward if you get my drift. Um, but they narrowed it down because of the uh, number of accidents that was occurring. So it it is concerning if there's going to have more more driveways than what we currently have in that tiny little area. Because now we're talking about four, if you consider both of these applications in tandem. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, your comments have been noted. Uh, I'll do a second round. Anybody in chambers or online? Seeing none, we'll do a third and final round. Anybody in chambers or online wish to speak to this item? Seeing none, I will call this public hearing item closed. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Clerk, can you please introduce the last item and confirm whether the statutory requirements have been met? Thank you, Worship. The last item on tonight's agenda is application 2020-432-RZ. The application is to permit the rezoning of the subject property located at 12211 and 12229. 228 Street from RS1 to RM1 to allow the future construction of a 17 unit townhouse development. The bylaw associated with this application is Maple Ridge Zone Amending Bylaw number 7713 2021, a bylaw to redesignate the subject properties from RS1 single detached residential to RM1 low density townhouse residential. The statutory requirements have been met for this public hearing with notices posted in the June 9th and 16th editions of the local paper. 62 notices were mailed out and uh, one piece of correspondence was received in opposition to this application um, and distributed previously. And I believe we're gonna speak to that one. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Goddard, you have the floor. Thank you. Before we start, we did receive one letter of opposition, not so much to the project, but just concerns, I should say. And it was from, uh, Verity uh, Haworth, I think it's pronounced, at 22818 122nd Avenue. And her concerns were three central ones, the loss of tree canopy on the site. There's some trees on the site that will be removed. Um, and in response to that, there are some trees being removed, yes. And they will be replanted with trees as well as the applicant is providing uh, cash and security to replace other trees in the city in accordance with the tree bylaw. Uh, street safety was one of the concerns she expressed about where the driveway intersection was. The driveway intersection has been changed from the original time it appeared uh, at Cow. It is now basically on the south side of the property, which makes that conflict much less worrisome. And the third item she raised was the need for a pedestrian sidewalk along 228th, I understand. And of course, the final design will be to a full urban standard, which includes street uh, sidewalk, curb gutter, and street trees and street lights potentially. So it will be an urban finish just across the frontage of this property. Eventually, uh, the city will probably, or as development occurs along 228th, have to extend that sidewalk north and south. Correct, yes. Yeah, thank you. And just looking at the uh, the current property um, availability along that corridor, um, there's still four lots that we don't have the full road width for to accommodate the sidewalk, the lanes of travel, and the parking. Um, and so that would be as future development proceeds along the corridor. Thank you. Thank you. So that addresses what I think their concerns. This is an item for townhomes of 17 units on these two lots at 12211 and two, sorry, 12211 and 12229, 228th Street, bit of a tongue tister. And we have a zoning bylaw and it's public hearing this evening. If the clerk could advance the slides for me, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Ground-oriented multifamily is a designation here, which allows greater density on major corridors, such as this road. It's RS1, single family, and there are two lots involved, about a quarter, three quarters of an acre. 17 units are being proposed to zone two townhouse. Once more, please. If, Next. Thank you. There's a subject site on 228th on the west side. Next, please. There's our higher designation, ground-oriented multifamily, which does permit townhomes on this site. Thank you. There's the overhead view of the trees on the site and the two homes, which will be removed. Thank you. On the conditions of moving forward, it's going to be townhomes. There's 17 units proposed. This is within the density range allowed in this designation. They will be three stories in height with three bedrooms fitting for families, slab on grade, no basements. Uh, they will have 30 for residential parking spaces, two inside each dwelling unit. They're under the bylaw. They are side-by-side -side, uh, unit arrangements as well as side-by-side -side garages. A minimum of one parking space is provided with rough ends on each of the structures being proposed. There is a community amenity charge of $4,100 per unit, which is totaling almost $70,000. Next slide, please. There is some variances required. There is a reduce the front yard setback from five to 4.5 meters and to reduce the interior lot line setback from six meters to 3.4. That side yard is acting as a side yard for the structures, which is adequate. Again, this will be subject of a future report to council. Next slide. This shows the site plan. This is from east to west to east. The future potential development on the south is ghosted in there to show what potentially it could look like road dedication is in a hatched area. So we're recommending it move forward under the following terms and conditions. Second reading was granted in April of this year. We recommended a servicing agreement, some road dedication, consolidation of the two lots, some covenants for protecting the stormwater management and the visitor parking, as well as the site is not contaminated. The two homes must be removed and the contribution of the amenity fee of 69,700. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does any member of the public in chamber or online wish to comment on this item? Nobody in chamber, is anybody online? I'm seeing a nodding head. Sorry, do we have somebody online? Okay. Yes. Hello. Mr. Griffiths, um, can you turn your camera on, please? There you are. I think I've got my camera on now. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Chuck Griffith. I'm with my wife, Selena, and we live at 12203 228 Street, right next door to this property. Um, our major concern is um, once they start construction on this, um, and they have to start pounding the ground, um, that could really adversely affect our retaining wall right next to the, uh, to their, uh, property. And, um, we just want to make sure that there would be something in place if they were to damage our, our property, um, you know, that we would have some way of getting that remediated and that they would have, um, flaggers and coners out and cones out when they um, are doing the construction um, because it is a busy street and it's hard to get in and out of um, out of our driveways as it is now. Um, we're just really concerned that when this goes forward that we won't be able to do that because they're going to have construction trucks up and down the uh, street parking area. and parking in our yard. Uh, and that's good. Are all your comments, sir? Yes. Okay. So we have uh, staff have been uh, jotting down your notes, and we appreciate yeah. your. Oh. Was there anything uh, further? Yeah, this is Selena Griffith, uh, Chuck's wife. Um, just a couple things. I noticed in the planning there seemed to be not very many visitors spots. 
Um, maybe I didn't read it all correctly, but I didn't see a lot of visitor spots for parking. I think it was only four. And now the street parking on 228th is getting pretty full now as it is. So I'm just wondering why there's so little visitors parking in this unit. And also the second thing I want to mention is I went into the property and all the trees have tags on to be removed. And we're talking like 60 foot old growth cedar trees, lots of beautiful trees and they all have tags on them. So I don't think they're removing some of the trees. I think they're removing like 95% of the trees. Um, and I'm just wondering if they're gonna replace that with some larger, um, older type of trees versus little seedlings that are gonna take 25 years to grow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we've taken note. I don't think we have any answers for you at the moment, but we have taken note of, of your concerns. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move to uh, round two. Anybody in chamber that are online wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll do a third and final call. Uh, anybody in chambers or online wish to speak to this item? Seeing none, uh, I will call this pu public hearing item closed. As we have no further business for the evening, I will adjourn for the evening. Thank you very much.